Hey guys, this is a video to recap session two of the Bible class, You on Mission. I'm just going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and the New Living Translation and point out a couple of things that we learn about us and them. Session one, we talked about God and, and who's God and what does God want. And so here we're going to get a second foundational lesson and look at who are we. So that starts off, we're going to start off in uh, chapter 5. I'm going to jump down to verse 16. It says, So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view, how differently uh, we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave them this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of kindness and then ignore it. So we see several things here. We're going to hone in on, well, who are we? You know, in this whole scheme of things and thinking about the mission of God, who are we? And so we see several things here. A, uh, we are alive in Christ. Wait, we're living for Christ, not for self. That's a transformation that happens when you come to Christ. So uh, again, another way that he puts that is that we're new creatures or that we are, we've been made into new people. But then beyond that, the text says that uh, we are messengers of reconciliation and Christ's ambassadors. And finally, I guess an E would be uh, in chapter six, verse one, it says that we are God's partners. So this is kind of what we see as who we are uh, once we have gone from the old life to the new life, right? When, when we've been made new creatures in Christ, uh, then now we're alive in Christ, we're made new, we're, we, and we've been given a task, and we, and we perform a role, and we are partners with God. And so like, just really important stuff. And I think this highlights a distinction uh, and a shift that we can see in eventually how we will present the gospel is because it's not just about what you're saved from, right? The, the emphasis here is not on the old life. The emphasis is on the new life. So it's not what you've been saved from. It's what you've been saved for or what you've been saved to. So it's a lot more emphasis on the task we've been given, the role we're playing as new creatures. So that's a real key thing. Who are we? It's what we've been saved to, not so much what we've been saved from. All right. Let's, we'll turn back to verse 16 because now the question is, well, who are they? You know, who are the people who are not Christians? How should we view them, those people? And it says here, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view, or we don't regard people from the flesh anymore. We used to see Christ this way, but we do no longer. So, so what does that mean? You know, what does it mean that we don't, we don't judge people from a worldly point of view anymore? Well, this is the Apostle Paul writing, and he calls himself a Pharisee of Pharisees. So this could really have two main meanings. One, in that kind of Pharisaical way, Paul's saying, I used to be hypercritical of Christ, right? Everything he did, I would judge, and we would judge as Pharisees, right? Is he eating with sinners? Like, oh, is he letting that woman touch him? You know, and all of these things. What did he just do on the Sabbath day? This guy, like, I can't believe this guy, Jesus. And everything that Jesus done did was scrutinized and criticized, right? Now, Christians have a history of doing that with people who are not yet Christians, right? Like, can you believe the pants that she's wearing? Like, can you believe what he just said to her? And things like that, uh, where we kind of take our... Our, our, our morals and we throw them and we force them on other people. And when they don't meet that standard, even though that they haven't been made new creatures yet, we judge them and we start to think things like they'll never be interested in following Jesus. And, and so we need to stop seeing people from that worldly point of view. A second thing is that we can, we can just judge by the flesh and not by spirit. So there's a lot of other things about Jesus that could be judged in that way. You know, like, um, you know, what good thing can come out of Nazareth? And, you know, things like that, uh, where, where people would really doubt, could this guy really be the Messiah? You know, Isaiah says that maybe Jesus was hard to look at, that he was maybe an ugly guy. Um, 
And, and so the things that they would have been looking for, physical traits of a Messiah and a Savior, Jesus wouldn't have matched those. And we can do the same thing. Their, their family, their income, their makeup, their ethnicity. There's a lot of different things, the kind of car they drive, the, where, where they went to school, where they didn't go to school, that, that we can place on people in ways that we can judge people. And we don't look at people that way any longer. And so how does God look at them? Um, simply as uh, not reconciled. I love the way that the New Living Translation puts it. You know, some of the other places just going along with the idea of reconciliation. So you're ministers of reconciliation. So our plea is be reconciled to God. Uh, in the NLT, it says, and so through Christ, we say, come back to God. And so that is how we view people is people that God wants. God wants them. God wants them saved. God wants to make them a new creature. Uh, God wants them into his fold. He wants them into his family. He wants to be call, calling them his children. And in, in all of his infinite wisdom, he has chosen you and I to make that plea for him. He's chosen you and I to be Christ's ambassadors in the world today. So that's a, a recap of uh, session two of You on Mission with the idea of now we know, uh, have a good sense of who God is and what does God want, and then how is God using us and how does God view the people that are not yet Christians.